hydrogen for fly paper, vector transition methods for biomass material, and amazing digital skill by using genetic algorithms. Uh, my name is Jose Saad, I'm a PhD candidate at Imperial Environmental University, Florida. I also am uh, one of the faculty member in the uh, Faculty of Saskatoon University in Iraq. Uh, the other team with uh, my uh, work, Dr. Pierce Ritchie, my advisor, and the other team, Christopher Burley, and Dr. Anthony Corey, uh, and Dr. Wendell. <coughs> Agriculturalist, let's talk about our uh, our situation. Agriculturalist projects can be effectively used as natural, sustainable alternative to insulation materials. So we chose two biomass materials like oak leaf and barley seeds. They are collected from nature. We crush it. After that, we did physical properties of these two biomass particles. So. One of these uh, physical properties like bulk density, the other one, moisture, angle of reinforce, and uh, uh, static angle uh, of uh, friction. These just for powders. After that, after we got these, uh, we uh, manufactured these two powders <coughs> in composite material by different weight ratios. Then we uh, measured the densities and thermal conductivities of these composites materials. After that, we got properties for these composite materials. Then we compared with the other properties for I mean, uh, common industrial or uh, common industrial insulation material. For example, we found these two material the physical properties of these two materials, the same as the properties in uh, backlight, plasterboard, anthracite coal, uh, summer, new green, uh, new green uh, rubber, and dissociation state. The other part of our work is optimizing heat transfer. A numerical optimization framework based on genetic algorithms is discussed to systematically alter geometric parameter for insulation design. I will talk about that later. Everyone wondering about one question. What are the fiber, natural fibers or biomass fibers? Biomass fibers or natural fibers are considered as one of the most important components in different manufacturing applications like textile, paper, packaging, and molding materials. Also, natural fibers are a good insulation material. The natural fibers are eco-friendly. That's the big important for us because we are dealing with sustainable things for, for why we are using these biomass materials because they are sustainable. Also, they could decrease cost density and mass. A lot of industrial uh, applications, industrial factories, I mean in the, in the air, uh, air, uh, uh, aircraft and uh, autom automotive uh, applications, they use these because they are decreased in weight. Our experimental methods. For example, we have two biomass materials. This image for viruses and this is for all three. For example, we took this viruses and we uh, grind, uh, uh, we gr uh, crush it in the grain grinder, mechanical grain grinder, then we uh, sieve it in the uh, sand shaker, then we got, this is to uh, prevent uh, uh, horses, first part, uh, part of horses, then after that we got uh, two powders, this is a, bio, a, a barley seed powder, and this is oak leaf powder. We did some uh, experiment, physical properties for that. For example, we used the uh, uh, AM scope, D100 uh, device microscope, to examine the, both these uh, materials. And also, we used uh, manual uh, relative humidity, this is manual humidity meter, uh, to get the exact uh, moisture percent. Then we use this, <coughs> the other physical property is bulk density of these two powders. For example, we use 
speedometer. This is for a density stop, uh, 50 mil uh, speedometer. We actually, we put this powder, for, for example, this is uh, Oakley powder. We put it and we tap it five times to make sure there is no cavities. After that, uh, also, we, we have to reach to a closed system. Then, we apply it here in the turbo device to measure the exact mass for this uh, powder, for each powder, I mean. After that, we apply this equation, normal equation, mass divided by volume, to get, uh, to get the volume density. We uh, run this five times per uh, each powder to make sure about the average of that powder. <coughs> Another uh, physical properties we use, this is flowability uh, measurement. Uh, actually, we installed this device by using a panel uh, with the volume of 0 0.20, uh, 21 liter. And uh, the distance between the end of this panel and the test surface uh, was uh, 75 millimeter. Actually, we poured we pour the powder in the upper stage of the panel, and after that, smoothly and uh, continuously distributed to get a heap of conical shape of this powder. Then we could measure the height and radius of this heap. After that, we could apply this alpha equal to tan inverse h divided by r to get uh, an angle of repose for each one. Also, we, uh, we run it, this is five times for each powder. The other one, the other physical properties, static coefficient of friction measurement. We use actually four uh, different surfaces, like this one, uh, aluminum, and uh, uh, plywood, paper, and rubber. Actually, we put this heap, after that we say we have two ends, this is a three end, and this is a fixed end, slightly and uh, continuously raise it, little by little, and uh, gradually <coughs> enter the whole, heap, the whole heap, the whole powder is pulled down in the, uh, in the fixed point. Then we had stand to fix the inclination angle. After that, we could use this protractor to measure the angle of static coefficient uh, of friction. Then we applied a new equal uh, tan alpha. Actually, uh, for the flowability, and this is for static coefficient of friction, we used the same amount, uh, 25 gram per uh, here After doing this, we have to manufacture these powders in a composite materials. Actually, the hexanephon epoxy uh, resin was used for making these composite powders. Then, uh, ethyl epoxy uh, is mixed with epocrine uh, with uh, parts per hundred resin or rubber of 33. So, the biomass fibers, we added 10%, 20% by weight for Oakley uh, reinforced composite. And we also added 10, 20, 30% by weight for Barry Seeds reinforced composite. Why we didn't put more than this percentage? Because it will be more viscous. That's why we didn't add many, uh, more than this, these two uh, percentage. Density of sample. Actually, we uh, measured bone density for the powder. Right now, here for the composite materials, how could we do that? Actually, we don't have a, a uniform or homogeneous volume for these composites, so we did, for example, this is a piece of uh, composite materials. This is density, turbo, uh, turbo density analyzer kit. This is an accurate device. Uh, we could uh, measure the, uh, the weight, dry weight in, in the air, and dry weight here in the water based on buoyancy uh, uh, or and, uh, also based on Archimedes principle, we will get pure density, salt density for that. And this uh, device could give us the salt density and liquid density. Just we are dealing with the salt density. Another thing, the thermal conductivity of sample. We used uh, this device, TPS, this TPS thermal uh, constant analyzer to, uh, to measure uh, thermal conductivity here, composite materials. Another section of our uh, research, optimizing heat transfer by using genetic algorithms. For example, we have this design. 
And we use genetic algorithms. Let's talk about genetic algorithms. Gen genetic algorithms are uh, techniques, uh, repost techniques, search report techniques that uh, mimic the idea of Darwinian evolution by using net rules of natural selection to investigate highly complex multidimensional uh, problems. For example, though the, there are three operators for this uh, genetic algorithm, selection, crossover, and the mutation. For example, we have uh, parent, one parent here, and one parent for, uh, here, and they are mating together. This is it's called uh, selection by, how can we get this by, by using wallet wheel to pick one parent and pick the other parent. They are mating together to produce a new uh, offspring. This new offspring is called uh, crossover. Then we generate, after generation, after generation, they, uh, we will get many generations for these. What the connection between our work and this work? Actually, we could solve this uh, uh, this uh, design direct. I mean, analytically, direct analytical uh, solution. But we have to improve this for the next stage or, uh, of our study. So this is biological study. We convert it to numerical or mathematical way. How can we do that? Actually, we have to set uh, five, uh, or to alter, five parameters design. For example, we have K in it for insulation materials, here, here insulation materials. We have H insulation, high for insulation, W for insulation, W for steel, this is a steel here, steel bars. And we have thermal conductivity of steel, and the temperature difference is here, 22 degrees centigrade. So, the idea of this work to minimize objective function. This is objective function, this is for your uh, equation, Q equals delta P divided by R total. How can we minimize that? By maximizing R total, thermal resistance. How could we use this? How could we get this? By using genetic algorithms, by maximizing the best fitness. Maximizing uh, the best fitness, and actually the the best fitness maximize our total. So if we got our total here, we will get the minimum uh, optimization for our problem. Our results, this is for biomass materials. We see these two for powders. This is a, a scale uh, size of each one, sorry. And uh, for the density and uh, moisture results, we have, for example, here, uh, barley seeds and oak leaves for five times we, we want it and we have standard deviation standard deviation for that after that we uh, we could see from that barley seed powder are finer in size than oak leaves and we have 7.7% uh, moisture and we have 10.5 uh, uh, moisture for the uh, oak leaves and we have uh, flow ability we could see from this uh, oak leaf is better uh, than uh, it's excellent flow ability than uh, than that is due to uh, angle of uh, lower angle of repose and we have here the, the static the highest static coefficient of friction was in uh, in plywood surface and the, the lowest a static coefficient of friction was in aluminum and paper surfaces. And this is, for example, border examination could be could give idea on bio, on how biomass uh, powders stick. We will uh, use the other bio, bio, uh, biomass materials like uh, jute and uh, uh, jute and uh, straw in the next step. Also, we have, for example, here we uh, this is for composite materials. We have this is density. Uh, this is neat, pure, uh, pure, uh, pure. There is no. Uh, we added 10 percent, 20 percent, and we compared this neat with the lowest amount of oak leaf, and we compared this with our amount of barley seed, and we got, for example, here density was found to be reduced with the biomass powder added to the neat epoxy, and the same with the other with the thermal conductivity. This is neat with the uh, 10 percent and with the 20 percent of barley seeds. And we have, this is genetic algorithms, right now the other part of our, uh, uh, as you see in here, we have the mutation from one 
to four centimeters. This is uh, uh, based on the probabilities of genetic algorithms. And when we got the minimum one, the value was 1.023 uh, centimeters, and so on for the other thing. And uh, K distribution material was 0.007 for, and this is, it could be matched with our search, or I searched about this number, and we got uh, for this uh, uh, for this amount, it's king span optimum as uh, optimum R as, and the distribution materials, we could pull it into uh, this sandwich for this design. Then we got from genetic algorithms 2.67 degrees centigrade per watt. This is for what for our total, and we applied that term uh, equation or vector function. We got 8.2 watt for the heat transfer, and we applied uh, 100 generations. And we we could apply more than 100 generations, but it's the same because this is not there is no changes in that uh, uh, term. And uh, for this uh, design. We will actually, we did this for one objective, single th uh, thermal objective uh, optimization, and we will do that for multi ob objective optimization by using uh, this, uh, uh, quantifying this sustainable by maximizing sustainability of this uh, design and minimizing uh, carbon footprint for this design in the in, in, uh, future, in the next future, and we will use the same genetic algorithms we did this, uh, but we built this uh, code in C plus uh, in C plus plus to verify this property to the next step, and we will do the way for this optimization the way Pareto form to uh, get the best uh, point of compromising between these multi objective functions. Conclusion: Characterization method technique of two types material type of leaf and various seeds are discussed and uh, we did physical properties of these two uh, powders and we uh, uh, measured the uh, thermal conductivities and the densities of these composites and the compact the oak leaf and the bar uh, barley seed uh, rainforest composites are shown to be good for the <coughs> materials and a numerical technique by genetic algorithms to form uh, an investigation materials based on the uh, our design. This is my references, and thank you for your attention. And thank you, have thank you. very interesting work. Do we have any questions from the audience? Yes. yes. So, uh, when we are talking about the insulation properties of the materials, yeah. uh, how do the uh, how are the insulation properties related to the flowability and uh, uh, the coefficient of friction that you measured? Yeah. This is, for example, uh, actually, in the beginning, it's just we have powder. We have not, we are not dealing with the mechanical mechanical properties. Just this is not chemical properties, just physical properties. One of the physical properties: bulk density, uh, flowability, static coefficient of friction, moisture, and uh, the others. Uh, for example, melting point. If you want to to measure or uh, etc. That's why I did. For example, also for uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, industries, they want to know the exact uh, flowability. Because if we don't know the flowability by using this powder, we cannot do the next step of composite uh, materials. From the manufacturing point. That's right. Yeah. Any questions? <coughs> no, well, do we have any further questions for the next presentation? Yes. I told one leaf is a 10 percent, 20 percent. Okay. One is 10, 20, and 30. What is the reason you missed the third person one? Just one uh, second. I had two for density or thermal conductivity. You are mentioning. Hey, you have two different kinds of parameters, like 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent. Right? Okay. One of them you're showing three of them. One I'm showing two of them. Okay. Why? Because if I do, for example, for oak leaf, 30 percent, the same as barley seed, it will be more moist, uh, more viscous. That's why I have limitation for that. I did various seeds, 10, 20, 30 percentage. In the other hand, we uh, I did, for example, 10, 20, that's it. If I do 30, it will be more uh, discussed. That's why I cannot do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, guys, we're going to go ahead and swap.
all of our buffer from the last session today, so let's give everyone a chance to present their work. We all travel to a great distance to come here, so. What else did you do this evening? Yeah. Yeah. All right, our next presentation is by Ms. Wisner on uh, integration of potential fluid dynamics into an introductory fluid mechanics course. We're in uh, our last two talks in the realm of engineering education. Hi, my name is uh, Sandy Wisner. I just graduated from the University of Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago. Um, and I'm here to talk about the integration of computational fluid dynamics 